Hello everyone, welcome to Nesso Academy. In this lecture, we will understand array of objects. So, without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics. The first topic is basics of arrays. First, I will give you the basics of arrays so that you will be comfortable with arrays. Then we will move to the next topic where we will understand array of objects. So, these are the topics. Let's start with the first one that is basics of arrays. So, what is an array? An array is a collection of elements of same data type stored in contiguous memory locations. You can think of an array as a list of items or elements of same data type. Data type of all the elements must be same and they must be stored in contiguous memory locations. This is what an array is. By contiguous memory locations, I mean memory locations are adjacent to each other. It is not the case that they are scattered. Also, instead of creating multiple variables for similar data, arrays can be used. We do not have to create multiple variables for storing similar kind of data. Instead, we can create an array to store the data. Whenever we want to store data of same kind and same type, then we can create an array. It is better to create an array in these situations. Now, let's understand through an example how we can create an array in C++. For this purpose, let us assume that we want to store marks of three different subjects. We may choose to store those marks in three different variables, like this. Here I have created these variables, marks1, marks2 and marks3. These are three different variables representing marks of three different subjects. These are the marks 80, 75 and 90. These are all integer values. Instead of creating these variables, we can easily create an array because we can see that these are similar kind of data. We want to store marks. And each marks is of type integer. Therefore, we can create an array called marks and we can store all these marks in that array. This is how we can create marks array. This is the syntax we need to follow. First, we need to specify the name of the array. After this, we can provide these brackets. Within brackets, we need to specify the size of the array, which is 3 in this case. This means this array can hold 3 items. Also, we need to provide the data type of the item. The data type of each item will be integer. This is what I have specified over here. This means marks is the array of three items where each item is of type integer. I hope this is clear to you. And this is how we can initialize this array. Within braces, we can provide the values. These are the values 80, 75 and 90. These are the marks of three different subjects. Now these marks are stored in this array. I hope this is completely clear to you. An array is quite beneficial because it makes our code more readable and short. Let us assume we want to store marks of 100 different subjects. We do not have to create 100 different variables for this purpose. This will be quite cumbersome. Instead, we can create an array like this. We need to provide the size as 100 and then we can provide the marks like this. I hope this is completely clear to you. Now let's see how we can visualize an array like this. This is how we can visualize the marks array. These are contiguous memory locations. Each memory location has the capability to hold an integer value. This is what we have already learned about an array. An array is a collection of elements of same data type stored in contiguous memory locations. These are contiguous memory locations as these memory locations are adjacent to each other. And each memory location is storing an integer value. 
Also, you can observe that each memory location has a unique value which is also called the index of that memory location. Through the index, we can access the element of that memory location. Each memory location has this unique index. The first memory location always gets index 0 and indices are always in increments of 1. That is why the next memory location has index 1 and the last memory location has index 2. I hope this is clear to you. Now, with the help of these indices, we can access these values. Let's say we want to access value 80. Then we need to provide the name of the array first. Within brackets, we need to provide the index 0. In this way, we can access this value 80. In the same way, we can access other values as well. Now, let us assume we want to print all these values on the screen. For this purpose, we can write these three std cout statements. Marks 0 is representing 80, marks 1 is representing 75, and marks 2 is representing 90. Here I have provided these indices in order to access these values. I hope this is clear to you. Now we can observe that we are using std cout, therefore, we need to include iostream header file. Apart from this, I have added backslash n at the end of these stdc out statements so that each value will be displayed in different line. Now, when we execute this program, we will get the output 80, 75 and 90. So, in this way, we can easily print all the values of the array on the screen. So, we have learned how to define an array like this how to initialize the array and how to access elements of the array. Now, let us assume that we have an array marks with 100 items. That is, we have marks array with marks of 100 different subjects. If that is the case and if we want to display all those marks on the screen, then we need to write stdc out statement 100 times. Instead of writing 100 stdc out statements, it is advisable to write a for loop and put one stdc out statement within it. Here in this case, we do not have to write these three stdc out statements. Instead, we can write a for loop like this. Here we have this for loop with one stdc out statement. Three stdc out statements have been replaced by one stdc out statement. Here we have this for loop where variable i is initialized to 0. Here I am checking this condition is 0 less than 3. Yes, this is true. Therefore, stdc out statement will execute and marks 0 which is 80 will be displayed on the screen. And then we will get a new line. After this, i++ will be evaluated, which makes i1. We know 1 is less than 3, therefore, stdc out statement will execute and marks 1, which is 75, will be displayed on the screen along with the new line. Then i gets value 2 and marks 2, which is 90, will be displayed. After this, i is incremented by 1, i becomes 3. And we know that 3 is not less than 3, therefore this condition is false and we will get outside of this for loop. When we execute this program, we will get the output 80, 75 and 90. We are getting the same output with the help of this for loop. I hope this is completely clear to you. So with this, we are done with the basics of arrays. This means we are done with the first topic. Now, let's move to the second topic to understand array of objects. We already learned how to create an array of integers. In the same way, we can also create an array of objects. And by objects, I mean objects of a specific class. So, array of objects is an array where each element of the array is an object of the class. So, array of objects is the collection of objects of a specific class. And 
Each object has its own copy of the data members, but they share same definition of member functions. We already know this about an object of a specific class. If we create multiple objects of a class, then each object gets its own copy of the data members and they share same definition of member functions. This is true for all the objects of the class. Now, let's see how to define an array of objects with the help of a C++ program. Here I've defined this class student. We have these private members of this class, name and age. Name has the type std string, that's why string header file is included here. Age variable has type integer. Then we have these public members. These are member functions. Set data function allows us to set values for name and age that too through the parameters n and a. Also, we have this display function that allows us to display name and age of a specific student on the screen. Now, let's define the main function. Inside the main function, let's create two objects or we can say two students of this class. We do not have to create two different objects. Instead, we can create an array of two objects. This is how we can create array of two objects. Inside this main function, I have defined array s of two objects of class student. So I have created two objects of this specific class. We can create as many objects as we want. Now, we know that S0 is the first object and S1 is the second object. Through S0, we can call setData function and we can pass these values to these members. Alice is passed to name and 20 is passed to age. In the same way, through the S1 object, we can call setData function and pass Bob to name and 21 to h. Now, here with the help of this for loop, we can call the display function that too with the help of a specific object. When i is 0, then this condition is true and therefore s0.display will be called. This means display function is called through s0 object. We know that S0 has provided these values to these members. Therefore, name Alice and age 20 will be displayed on the screen. After this, i is incremented by 1. i becomes 1. Condition is true. Therefore, S1.display will be called. Now, display function is called through S1 object. Because it is called through S1 object, name, Bob, and age, 21, will be displayed on the screen. I hope this is clear to you. Then after this, i is incremented by 1. We will get 2. We know 2 is not less than 2. Therefore, condition is false and the loop terminates. Then after this, 0 is returned to the operating system. And we know that we will get this output when we execute this program. We will get name Alice, age 20, and name Bob, age 21, on the screen. So with this, we have learned how to define an array of multiple objects. With this, we are done with the last topic as well. And this means we are done with this lecture. Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this lecture. I will see you in the next one.